Removing the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMworld and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to the Cube at VMworld 2015. I'm Stu Miniman. My co-host for this segment is Brian Gracely. Pleased to have first-time guest on the Cube and newly appointed CEO of the VMware User Group, or what we all call VMUG, is Brad Tompkins. Brad, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. All right. So, uh, you know, the VMUG organization doesn't need intro any introduction to our audience here uh, at, at, at VMworld. Our sixth year at the show, uh, Brian and I have wor worked with uh, VMware many years, both the experts. Uh, but give us a little bit about your background and what led you to this role? So uh, prior to being the CEO of VMUG, I worked for a uh, infrastructure as a service provider, and uh, we, they were a part of the vCloud Air Network, and we also did co-location. Prior to that, I worked for a company that focused on the insurance industry and, and delivering business process outsourcing, and I was over the uh, infrastructure, and we used VMware, we replicated, used SRN, recovery point appliance, and those kind of things. So that's, uh, that's, that's my background. Uh, back in 2010, I was involved in other user groups, and that's kind of got me uh, my taste for uh, the user group and, and how they operate. And so when I got a phone call about VMUG, I'd been a member for a while, and they said, are you interested? And of course, I jumped at that opportunity. So a few interviews later, and uh, here I am. All right, so that, that's excellent. So while people know the VMUG, maybe you can give us just a little bit of insight about the structure, my understanding, CEO's brand new role, and you're the, you're the, you're the first one, right? That's right. So, so help, help unpack that for us some. So what happened, as you know, uh, VMUG started in 2010, and since then we've grown to over 100,000 active members. And at that point, the board had a consultant come in, and they said, you know, for y'all to get to that next level, you need to think about your structure. And the board realized that. And their recommendation was to go out and hire a CEO, which they did. And then it's my, uh, my job to kind of build out that structure and see what it's going to take to get VMUG to the next level as we continue to grow. Excellent, excellent. So um, what, what, what does VMUG aspire to? So, uh, you know, User groups have been around for a while. Some of them are enormous. SAP has an enormous one. Um, what is, how, how does VMware think about their user group as the company diversifies? I mean, you've got them originally being virtualization. We see Pat talking about cloud and user computing. How do you guys think about you know, VMUG? You, you know, you're talking about taking it to a bigger thing. How does it evolve along with VMware, or do, or do you have different sort of uh, ways to think about how VMUG evolves? Well, we're an independent organization, yep. but obviously we're tightly aligned with VMware. And Keeping up with everything that VMware does is, 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 is can be difficult and challenging. Yeah. But what we want to do is we do want to align with each of their business units and the support that we get from those business units is tremendous. And they see us as a value to, for them to be able to um, get their message out to market. And we're also there to help as a sounding board if something should come up that they want feedback from their users, they look to us and they say, okay, this is the issue that we're having. How can VMUG help us with that? So it's a really a joint partnership, and it has worked really well, and they see tremendous value in the user group, and obviously we see tremendous value having that access and insight into VMware that not only helps VMUG as an organization, but it helps us deliver more value proposition to our members. So, so Brad, uh, I'm, I'm I've talked to the community a bunch, and you know VMware really is the, is the company that helped drove server virtualization across sure. the industry. They didn't come up with virtualization; it existed for a bunch of years. I mean, my mainframe friends, you know, talk about how many decades it's been around. Um, there's a lot of areas that both VMware and the VMUG are going into educating on. You know, you came from an infrastructure as a service company. VMware is a piece of you know a broad ecosystem. So, what what do you t say to people that say, well? Is it too VMware focused? Uh, I need to help educate this community about uh, you know, things like cloud and things like uh, you know, the emerging markets of what's happening and how storage and networking and virtualization goes in. Uh, you know, you know, wh wh what do you say that people ask about you know, a kind of a very much VMware centric focus versus more of a just broader educational role? So the purpose of VMUG is education and then that's what we want to do. That's, that's one of the main benefits we give to our members. And VMware, as you can see today, with a lot of the keynotes in the past week, you know, they understand that most customers have a multi-vendor environment. So we're able to partner with other folks, um, strategic partners of VMware, to kind of help build that complete solution. 
Another role that I believe we play is helping our members know what's next, what's coming down the pipe. What do you need to know about in the future? We can help them out with their job now, but we need to help them out with their job in the future. And that's where, as VMware expands out into different areas, that we want to be there at the forefront and say, okay, here is some information to you, for you to use as a member to know what's coming and know what to be prepared for. And let's face it, in some cases, that might not be a VMware solution, but VMware can help educate them on the industry that's coming, and then they can make intelligent decisions for their businesses on how to move forward. Yeah, we were, we were talking in the introduction section, um, you know, Pat laid out a vision for, for the next 30 years, you know, kind of far reaching. Uh, we got some feedback from just talking to people in the hallways. You know, sometimes it feels like, uh, you know, it, it's going too fast, it's, it's too far out there. What do you hear from your community? Do they feel like what, what you guys are presenting is, is the right sort of timeline? Is it, do you have to sort of, do you struggle with how much is, you know, new versus sort of future looking to help them drive their careers? How do you, how do you balance that? It is a challenging balance, and we do take feedback from our members to try to get what, what balance that they, know, they need. But we spend a tremendous amount of time trying to figure out what's coming next so we can kind of sprinkle that in and let people know, hey, you need to be aware of this. Another reason we do this is we want to diversify our member base. Uh, DevOps, heard a lot about DevOps here. I want to find out how we can better tap into the DevOps community and not I think their opinion of Emung might be, oh, it's just you know, server virtualization group. Well, that's not the case. And so we need to be able to appeal to them, bring them in the community, and then you've got a room where you've got DevOps sitting at the table next to the server virtualization guys, next to the AirWatch guys, next to the NSX guys, and that's where really things can um, you know, start to gel and they can take their businesses and their career forward. All right, so, so Brad, uh, if I understand it, there, there's a little bit of a reorg that, that's finalizing for just kind of VMUG as a structure maybe over the next couple of months. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure I've got that right, maybe you could explain. Uh, but the, the, the question I have is, in your role as CEO, you, you've got a number of constituencies. You've got you know, all these people that are donating their time, effort, and energy to help build these communities, you know, do, the, do the local chapters. Uh, you've got uh, the sponsors that help you know, bring this in, and uh, then you've got the attendees. You know, how, how do you look at these constituencies, and, and what, what's your, what do you expect to see your role and uh, your vision going forward? Well, my role and vision, as with VMUG, is to continue to drive the value prop for our members. You know, you mentioned our volunteer leaders. What makes VMUG so great is those passionate members and passionate leaders that we have. We have over 230 chapters across the world. We have 500 local events. We do 40 plus user cons across the globe. All that couldn't be possible without the leaders. Now that being said, there is an infrastructure behind the scenes that supports that. And that's where my role and the staff roles, they come in. So I am looking at doing some things on the organization of that and how can we serve our members better and our leaders better so they can do what they do best out there in the field. And I think by doing that, we really need to look at VMUG as a business. And so part of my job is the business aspect of VMUG, how do I make us viable and have a path forward for the future? And our board of directors are all customer led and the vision that they have is tremendous and they, they know where they want VMUG to go. They hired me to make that vision a reality. Yeah, so in, in the intro actually we were talking about if you look at the bloggers mm -hmm. uh, that are out there, one of the challenges you have is sometimes you're a good blogger and you get sucked up by a company, and now you're a vendor, and <laughs> is that same person still the same writer? You know, we understand where his paycheck comes, but you know, there's some great you know, writers out there that I've seen them work in many jobs, and I follow their writing no matter where they go. Uh, with the VMUG, you, know, you get a lot of visibility when you're running this, and some of them have got sucked up by vendors, and that means, well, I, I need to go find a leader, uh, which you know, it's, it's tough to always backfill. Wait, 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 wait. What do, you, what do you see with that? Uh, is there any way that you know, somebody working for a vendor can still uh, you know, be a leader of a VMUG? We see that happen all the time, yeah. and, and it's really the, kind of the double-edged sword. We tell folks, look, there's a lot of things you can get uh, out of VMUG and being involved in the user group. I've been involved in user groups my whole career, and now it is my career. So, I mean, I'm a prime example. So we encourage folks to step outside of their norm and say, you know what, if there's things you want to do. I was speaking with one of our leaders at the VMUG Lounge, and he said, I wanted to be more comfortable in front of public speaking. So he took on the VMUG leadership role, got that comfort, added his skill set, and this is a non-technology skill set. <clears throat> Next thing you know, Vendor scoops him up, and now he's progressed his career through VMUG. We love hearing that story. That's great. 
The problem is then we have to backfill that position. And we do look for uh, customers to lead and be the, be the head of the local, of the local groups. That's, uh, that's our design. But it doesn't mean that partners can't participate. You know, partners are a key part of VMUG, and they are needed as well to make, make this whole ecosystem work. So there's ways that they can get plugged in uh, other than just booth duty. They can have leadership roles and, and be a part of it. Right. But we do want to have the, uh, the local leader to be the face of the group to be a, a customer. Yeah, we were, you know, we were, another thing we were talking about in the introduction is there are so many fire hoses of information, you know, whether it's here at VMworld or it's just day to day, week to week. Um, you know, I know myself personally, I get emails every day from just in the Raleigh area where I'm from, you know, a meetup about this, a meetup about that. You know, I mean, the, the meetup scene has become so much more about education, about, you know, community education. H how do you have to think about that? Because obviously, you know, as CEO, you have to present the VMUG as a, as a sort of a competitive product. You're competing for people's time, their, their information, their learning. How is that shifting from what it was, you know, in 2010? You know, do you have to think about more frequent events? Do you have to think about different locations? Or is, that, is anything radically changing given how other people are trying to educate their communities? Well, we, we always want to evolve our events, and that is things that we look at. And, and it might, uh, you know, be taking user cons and how do we tweak those and make those better. Uh, also, we're looking at what new events do we need to have out there to hit our audience. And that's going to be the traditional vSphere server virtualization audience, but as I mentioned before, it also can be other audiences. So we want to align up with the business units of VMware, but we also want to see what other kind of segmentation can we do. Well, that might be geographical, it might be industry, it might be skill set. And that way, any member that comes to us, regardless of where they are, north, south, east, west in their career, they can find a way to plug in with VMUG and better themselves and also learn more about the virtualization industry that we're all in. And I think that's a, one of the things in, that we really need to focus on for next year to, you know, how do we do that? And how do we keep up with all the different uh, business units and industries that VMware is in? Yeah. 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 You got a lot of balls to juggle when it was like that. So, uh, Brad, my understanding is actually your first time coming to VMworld. Uh, I'm curious as to, you know, you, what your, your experience has been so far, and how does kind of the, the VMworld cadence, the, the twice a year event, uh, feed into what happens in VMUGs around the world? So we obviously kind of take a little break from our user cons before and after user of, uh, sure. VMworld for obvious reasons. Uh, this is a tremendous event, and VMware allows us to have a large presence here, which is wonderful, and so we, we appreciate VMware's support on that. But the, the event this week has just been uh, phenomenal. Uh, I've, I've obviously attended numerous different events in the past, and maybe not VMworld, but other events. But this is really a, a, even a lot bigger than I had expected. It's amazing to see uh, the mass of people. Uh, the opening session the first day, I mean, it was out, the, out the, the building with people lining up to go into. But what I find so interesting is just the energy I get, not only from listening to Pat and listening to Sanjay and listening to the VMware folks speak, but also listening to our leaders and our members. I was able to meet a lot of them today. A lot of them I, I had kind of met, so to speak, on Twitter, but it's nice to put a face to the Twitter handle. And we have an active community in, in many different ways, and it's just been exhilarating. I think my body is telling me that it's time to start slowing down, but my mind is going 90 miles an hour, and it's like, give me more, give me more. Yeah, no, I, I hear, I woke up an hour before my alarm this morning, uh, which was <laughs> really early before the sun was up, and uh, you know, the brain starts going. So, uh, last question I have for you is, how do you balance like trying to get everybody on the same page from the training standpoint and still allowing the local chapters to have local flavors? I mean, I, I know a bunch of the VMUG leaders, they do some really cool things. I mean, you know, the indie VMUG have done some awesome stuff. Awesome Down your things. neck of the woods, uh, you know, really understand, you know, we, we've got some great heritage up in the New England area where I'm from uh, with the VMUG team. So, so how, do you, how do you help, you know, learn across the organizations, share ideas across the organizations, and let, you know, kind of all those local ideas uh, both flourish and feed back into the organization. Right, so that is something I, I talk to my leaders about a lot, and, and I tell them, staff is here, use them as needed. A more mature user con, they know what they're doing, they got it down, and it might be staff, I need you to organize the lunch, or pick the venue, or, or work out this contract. 
Other groups that are less mature, they really lean more heavily on staff and, and they do a lot more of it. We're good either way. We want to have a good event. And if it's people that have the time and the passion, they want to be more involved in it, we let the leaders do that. They know the local area. They spice it like Indy. We had a little Indy car racing and things like that. So it makes it more personal, which is what we want to attract those local folks. But we're here to have the back-end office support that, that's needed. So uh, also by doing that, it allows our staff and headquarters to kind of have one place where all the good ideas are. And if another group comes in and say, hey, I was thinking about that. Oh, well, Kansas City has done that and it worked out well. Or we did this in Milan and it worked out well. So those kind of things we're able to share along with just getting together at events like VMworld to sit down face to face. Uh, the VMUG Lounge has been extremely busy, very pleased to see that. And so it's good to just have that face to face conversation where we can talk about best practices. All right, so exciting stuff, Brad. Really appreciate you taking time uh, to, to come out and speak with us. Uh, I, I guess just leave our audience with, uh, you know, how do they get involved uh, if they want to learn more? Uh, you know, wh where do they reach? What websites do they go to? Uh, you, you know, sh share that. Yeah, vmug.com. That's the place to go. Our membership is free. I encourage everybody to join up. And then on that website, you can learn how to get plugged in on your local communities. And if you're not anywhere where there's local, we do have virtual events. We have weekly virtual events, and we also have two major full-day virtual events that people can participate in, and it's wonderful for them to be able to do that regardless of where you are. Uh, I want to thank you for having me, Stu and Brian. This has been fantastic. Uh, very excited to be here today, and uh, thank you for the time. All right, well, Brad, uh, thank you so much. I'll let you and Brian you know, catch up on uh, you know, the football uh, when, when we wrap <laughs> things up. North Carolina. And, yeah, uh, yeah all, all things North Carolina. Uh, so thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Lots more coverage here from VMworld 2015. This is theCUBE. Thanks for watching.